Hey there! In this video, we're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crazy on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity velocity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, 
It lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's ambient occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. We're delving into the realm of GTA 6 Online, the upcoming multiplayer aspect of Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto 6. We'll dissect all the insights gathered from leaks back in 2022, alongside an intriguing anti-cheat patent filed by Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive. This patent offers a glimpse into how the forthcoming online experience aims to ensure a safer environment compared to the current GTA Online. Furthermore, we'll explore a novel method Rockstar plans to implement in GTA 6 for managing online sessions. This innovation promises to infuse the expansive world of GTA 6 with a livelier atmosphere, enriching the player's immersion in its intricacies. Undoubtedly, GTA Online stands as a titan in the realm of multiplayer gaming. Its enduring popularity has significantly contributed to the ongoing success of GTA 5 over the past 11 years. This success owes much to Rockstar's astute strategy. Crafting a robust core game with GTA 5, and then supplementing it with regular content updates for the online segment. By continually introducing new weapons, vehicles, and attire, Rockstar keeps players engaged and motivated to accumulate in-game currency. As we eagerly anticipate the official unveiling of GTA 6, players are hopeful that it will address prevalent issues plaguing the current iteration. Chief among these concerns is the rampant presence of modders and cheaters, whose actions not only disrupt gameplay, but also pose security risks by unlawfully accessing personal data. To tackle this issue, Rockstar has devised a fresh approach set to debut in GTA 6. This method aims to bolster the game's security measures. The patent responsible for this enhancement is titled 
Method and apparatus for preventing cheating in a video game environment by providing obfuscated game variables. Filed by Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019, this patent outlines a system and method aimed at curbing cheating within video game environments. By disguising game variables in memory, the patent seeks to thwart attempts by players to monitor and manipulate values such as health, ammunition, and in-game currency for unfair advantages. Traditionally, developers combat such exploits by encrypting, coding, or obfuscating the location of these values, alongside implementing integrity checks to detect unauthorized modifications. However, these methods have drawbacks, as they often impact game performance and inadvertently expose variable locations to savvy attackers. Rockstar's innovation lies in masking the whereabouts of these variables, offering a more robust defense against cheating in GTA 6's online. I won't delve into the technical intricacies, but essentially, Rockstar employs a clever and seemingly straightforward technique to conceal these values. This makes it considerably tougher for attackers to pinpoint their locations. While the concept of masking values may seem straightforward, its effectiveness in bolstering stability and enhancing security for the future online segment is paramount. Moving forward, let's turn our attention to the next patent, titled System and Method for Session Management in a Multiplayer Network Gaming Environment. Filed by T2 Interactive in 2021, this patent addresses Disclosed Our Systems and Methods for Session Management. The Disclosed System allows for seamless merging and splitting of network sessions in a multiplayer network gaming environment. Seamless session management allows dynamic movement of players in a virtual world during gameplay without unnecessary loading and or stalling. As the players in the virtual world move around, the management of active game sessions can be improved to affect a more realistic perceived population. In this patent, Rockstar highlights the crucial role of online components in the success of many games, citing GTA Online as an example. They emphasize the challenges of managing network technology and resources to create a vibrant virtual world. Traditional MMO games often face limitations in session management, with some opting for single sessions that may restrict the depth of content due to increasing player counts. Others utilize multiple sessions, which can hinder feasibility, especially in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like in GTA Online. To address these issues, Rockstar has developed a pioneering system for seamless session management. This innovative approach enables fluid splitting and merging of network sessions, allowing for a more immersive virtual world free from hardware and software constraints. Allowing players from different sessions, but in the same virtual area of the map, for example, to be merged into a single session. This allows players from previously different sessions to come across one another, thereby making the virtual world seem more populated. As an additional advantage, seamless session merging handles many network failures silently. In prior art systems, a player who loses network connectivity can be kicked out of a session and may not be able to rejoin because they are in a session by themselves. However, the Session Management System 100 allows for a disconnected player to exist in a session by themselves for a predetermined period before they are reconnected to the remaining players in the session or can be joined with another session. The method begins with monitoring a triggering event. In some embodiments, the triggering event defines when to merge two sessions or split a single session. For example, when the object, virtual players, are in the same session, move physically apart from another. The object by a predetermined virtual distance, this triggers the session management system to split the session into two different sessions. Likewise, if objects from two different sessions are within a predetermined virtual distance from one another, the session management system and merge the sessions to allow interaction between objects of the respective sessions. Other instances of monitored triggering events encompass various player and object actions, including changes in position or visibility, player entries and exits from the virtual world, and game-related activities like mission completions or tutorial beginnings. Rockstar's solution ensures seamless management of these events, preventing inconsistencies such as duplicated objects during session transitions. This approach accounts for factors like virtual geography, team management, networking resources, and social relationships to maintain continuity across sessions. For example, once a session is split, there can be two sessions, each with their own distinct copy of an object. Avoiding this split can avoid players that intentionally duplicate valuable objects to exploit virtual game economics. 
If these two sessions were to later merge, there can then be two identical objects in the same session. In this manner, the session management system advantageously avoids object duplication when two players are merged following a split. I trust that I've conveyed this information clearly. The implementation of this new system in GTA 6 promises to enhance the game's atmosphere, ensuring a more bustling world while maintaining a high level of detail throughout. Now, let's delve into what we've learned about GTA Online from the leaks of 2022. Multiplayer. In the bottom left in one of the clips, one can see there are two players in a 30-player lobby. This is because there are two slots for spectators, similar to GTA Online and Red Dead Online. There is also a reference to the script host. After that, there is a code which is either the session host or game master. Based on the information gathered, it seems probable that peer-to-peer -peer connections and 30-player lobbies will make a comeback in GTA 6 Online. However, there's a twist in how sessions will operate, allowing for seamless transitions between them. Now, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section about everything we covered in today's video regarding GTA 6 Online. From 2022 and onward, a group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this, if they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under-the-radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House. This incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage. They combined their detective skills with the official trailer and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. Then, the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it, a tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. 
And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately, you know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now, about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves, or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork, but truth be told, there wasn't much to work with. So, they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. They've made strides, particularly in fleshing out the Miami Beach region seen in the trailer, those gorgeous Venetian islands from the breathtaking aerial shot, and even narrowing down the location of Lucia's incarceration in the game. Looking ahead, this ongoing commitment over the coming years will gradually unveil more insights into what we can anticipate from the GTA 6 map. The anticipation is real, and it's fascinating to witness how this mapping endeavor will continue to shape our expectations for GTA 6. Looking at the timeline, it's pretty clear that both the completion of the project and the release of GTA 6 are still a considerable number of years down the road. But let me tell you, the dedication and hard work displayed by this community are nothing short of remarkable. Honestly, they deserve way more recognition for what they're doing. If you're keen on staying updated with the latest progress, or even lending a hand to this endeavor, I strongly recommend hopping onto the GTA 6 Mapping Community Discord. You'll find the link in the description below. These individuals have a monumental task ahead of them. But you know what? It's an incredibly intriguing project. Back in the days before GTA 5, I didn't even know something like this was happening behind the scenes. But now, as we patiently wait for 2025, Every snippet of information or rumor about GTA 6 gets me all excited. And out of everything related to the game, I find the mapping community's tireless efforts the most captivating and commendable. A massive thank you to every single person contributing their time and effort to this project. Here's all the information we've managed to gather about Grand Theft Auto 6 so far. Dedicated fans have compiled a 60-page document that meticulously covers every new feature revealed in last year's leaks. These features have been officially confirmed by Rockstar Games, as they originate from the footage Rockstar themselves acknowledged as part of Grand Theft Auto 6. Keep in mind that the game is still in development, so some details might evolve. However, as of now, these are the features you can expect to find in the game. If you're interested in delving into the full document, you can find a link in the description.
but bear in mind that it's quite an extensive read, so we'll break it down for you. Let's begin by discussing the game engine. Euphoria Physics has undergone adjustments, and improvements have been made to the ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, Grand Theft Auto 6 will incorporate lighting and skybox systems similar to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This means you can anticipate enhancements like volumetric clouds and better lighting, which mark a significant leap forward even compared to Red Dead 2. One notable detail from the leaks is the presence of heavy fog, a feature not prominently seen in GTA 5, except for snowy conditions. Advanced weather systems will play a more prominent role in GTA 6, adding depth and immersion to the game world. As for characters, we already have insights into several individuals set to appear in the game. While Jason and Lucia are the main protagonists, the leaks have revealed the existence of other characters. These include Dre, not to be confused with Dr. Dre, Sam, a friend of Dre, Kai Wyman, Zach R.B. Shaw, and several others like Vicky, Iris, Shanice, and YJ. It's quite astonishing that we even have details about their heights. Lucia stands at 5 feet 3 inches, while Jason measures 6 feet 1 inch tall. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. We've also got details on three different gangs set to make an appearance in Vice City. Sand for Sand, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the Far Right Militia. Moving on to tools and items, the list is quite extensive. You can expect to find an autodialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, a color tool, painkillers, a pool cue, trauma kits, a golf driver, various food and drink items, a golf putter, a USB drive, a golf iron, a crowbar, a golf wedge, a torch, a slim gym, a tracker jammer, a duffel bag for stashing your loot, cigarettes, and a backpack, again for storing your loot. When it comes to weaponry, the leaks confirm several options, a rocket launcher, an assault rifle, a baseball bat, a polymer pistol, a knife, a bolt action sniper rifle, a Molotov cocktail, a spear gun, which is intriguing, a smoke grenade, a compact SMG, a flashbang, a micro SMG, a hunter sniper rifle, a heavy machine gun, an auto rifle, and a pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel system will be divided into three sections, weapons, equipment, and gear. This setup is reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2, where you had access to your weapons, items, and horse all in one interface. Notably, we've seen glimpses of the ability to hold different weapons in each hand, and there's an additional quick item inventory in the bottom left corner of your screen. In a video clip, we observed an NPC firing at Jason, and shortly after, we noticed that Jason's health was low. A tip appeared on the left side of the screen, indicating, you were injured, your health will regenerate slowly. Open your weapon wheel and use a recovery item to replenish your health faster. Unlike GTA 5, where your health regenerated only up to 50%, in GTA 6, it seems that you may regenerate to full health naturally, albeit at a sluggish pace. However, if you want to expedite your healing process, you can employ a medical item. We've got confirmation on seven open world activities that will be available in the game. Currently, these activities include dice, golf, fishing, and races. Additionally, there's a van shipment activity, and in one of the videos, you can spot the spawning location for a delivery van event. This location is near the industrial area of Port Gellhorn, and it's noteworthy that there's a warning poster about security cameras in this area, suggesting the need for caution while attempting to rob the van. Now, regarding robberies, if you've seen the leaks, you might remember the Hank's Waffles robbery, which was quite impressive. Jason and Lucia took on the challenge of robbing this massive diner. In another clip, when Jason was entering a store for a robbery, it became apparent that he possessed an ability allowing him to see through walls. The leaks also mention events related to searching vehicle trunks for something valuable, or perhaps finding nothing at all. Moving on, there's another event type called Deliveries mentioned, specific to Port Gellhorn. It's somewhat challenging to predict the exact nature of these events, but that's all the information we have for now. As for enterable buildings, Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to offer more opportunities for exploration. Confirmed locations you can enter include the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, the Jack of Hearts, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries. Now, let's discuss multiplayer. In the leaked files, we did come across one multiplayer clip, and in the bottom left corner of the screen, it displayed PL2 of 32, indicating that there were two players in the lobby out of a possible 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online. While it's mentioned as 32 slots, it's worth noting that the player count is actually capped at 30, with two additional spots reserved for spectators. While hopes may be for larger lobbies in GTA 6, at least during this testing phase, they were exploring the feasibility of 30-player lobbies. Let's delve into collectibles in the game. 
During a scene in one of the clubs with Lucia, we can observe a developer placing a cardboard box on the ground. Notably, these boxes appear to be lootable, with a circle icon indicating their interactability. The debug text on this box reads, collectibles underscore car underscore pass, suggesting that these boxes will contain car part collectibles. Furthermore, there's mention of Wyman car parts boxed generic used, which has sparked speculation that players may collect car parts specifically for a character named Wyman. It's inferred that both Jason and Wyman share an interest in classic cars. Moving on, we've got collectible hats. In a video featuring Jason in an apartment, a developer is seen interacting with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat in the debug text. This implies that one of the ambient activities in the game will involve gathering various articles of clothing, which adds an intriguing layer to gameplay. Now there's a comprehensive list of brands featured in the game, which I won't read out individually, as many may not be of significant importance to the storyline. Instead, I'll display them on your screen for your reference. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to take a closer look. Moreover, we have a list of confirmed animals in the game. As of now, the roster includes snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, boars, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list, and there's a good chance we'll encounter even more wildlife when the game officially launches. These are simply the animals we have information on at this point in time. In the ongoing exploration of the forthcoming Grand Theft Auto installment, a plethora of new gameplay mechanics has come to light. These enhancements promise to augment the player experience in a variety of ways, ushering in a fresh layer of dynamism and immersion within the game world. First and foremost, players can now maneuver while ensconced in cover. This feature introduces a newfound level of flexibility during engagements, allowing for more strategic positioning in combat scenarios. Additionally, the ability to assume a prone position, a feature conspicuously absent in previous iterations of the game, adds an exciting dimension to gameplay, affording players the capacity to lie flat on the ground, potentially enhancing stealth and tactical maneuvers. Furthermore, the inclusion of loot bags offers a means to store surplus items, expanding inventory management options. An interesting addition is the capability to both drop and retrieve weapons, affording players greater adaptability in response to evolving circumstances. During intense firefights, a novel underfire animation engages, wherein the player character instinctively shields their face from incoming projectiles, providing a more immersive combat experience. In the aftermath of enduring a severe blow, players are granted the opportunity to enact self-revival, potentially turning the tide of adversity. In aiming down sights, the option to seamlessly switch shoulders grants players a tactical advantage, facilitating improved positioning and target acquisition. Moreover, hand-to-hand -hand combat now includes the ability to execute grabs, diversifying the melee combat mechanics. A noteworthy addition to the game is the implementation of buddy communication, embodied in the buddy comms and buddy ping system. Although specific details remain undisclosed, it is plausible that these features will facilitate coordinated actions between the two main characters, Jason and Lucia. Vehicle combat has witnessed a transformation, as shooting from car windows now entails the complete egress of the player character from the window, enabling full 360-degree firing capabilities, thereby revolutionizing vehicular combat dynamics. The intriguing Eagle Eye system, seemingly exclusive to Jason, allows for a form of wall-penetrating vision, although its applicability to Lucia remains uncertain. Enhancements also extend to interactions with in-game elements. Players will find themselves endowed with a broader range of interactions, such as the capacity to carry bodies, engage in robberies, issue threats, and converse with non-playable characters NPCs, during heists. Moreover, the ability to collect additional items, including beer bottles and cans, enriches the gameplay experience. Shifting the focus to new gameplay systems, one particularly exciting addition is the concept of money laundering. During the Hank's Waffles robbery, an icon associated with the car wash property, a washing machine adorned with a dollar sign, has been identified as indicative of money laundering. This suggests that players may have the opportunity to purchase specific types of businesses with the intent of laundering illicit funds in the single-player mode. Moreover, the inclusion of fences introduces a layer of illegal commerce within the game. These fences serve as intermediaries for players to sell illegal items, providing a means to offload contraband and potentially profit from illicit endeavors. The inclusion of hacking mechanics is confirmed to some extent in the game. Lucia is equipped with a set of intriguing tools, including a tracker jammer, immobilizer bypass, USB drive, and an auto dialer. As of now, it remains unconfirmed whether Jason will also have access to these items. Historical leaks from a few years ago hinted that Lucia would be the designated hacker, so the extent of hacking abilities for each character awaits further clarification. Among the event types within the game, two distinct categories emerge, pragmatic cool 
and chaotic and romantic cool. While specific details surrounding these events are not fully disclosed, they introduce intriguing possibilities for players to navigate. Furthermore, during robberies, players will have the capacity to issue commands to the other character involved. In a video clip from the leaks depicting a robbery, a tip notification suggests checking in with Jason or holding for more options. This implies that players can give their partner commands during a heist. Notably, prompts to instruct Jason to either surrender or follow indicate a degree of control over both characters simultaneously, simplifying coordination compared to relying solely on AI behavior. The witness system and police recognition within the game hold significant implications. During the Hank's Waffle robbery video, an interesting detail surfaces regarding the Wanted Level Stars interface which includes the term full description. This strongly suggests that witnesses within the game possess comprehensive knowledge about the player character. Consequently, law enforcement is expected to recognize the player once Lucia enters a police vehicle. Additionally, a transition is observed from no vehicle description to full vehicle description in response to Lucia's actions. This implies that even after losing a wanted level, if the police spot the player in the same vehicle, they will react accordingly, potentially leading to an arrest or hostile encounter. During the robbery sequence, Jason can be seen actively preventing customers marked with yellow icons above their heads from calling the authorities or fleeing the scene. Notably, an NPC within the diner exhibits a yellow icon above her head. Following Lucia's exit from the diner, the icon begins to flicker. Subsequently, as Lucia approaches a police car surrounded by law enforcement, the icon shifts to red. The female NPC then departs from the diner, making eye contact with Lucia before hastening away. These developments underscore the sophistication of NPC interactions, presenting a notable advancement in the game's artificial intelligence systems. The prospect of item sharing between the characters Jason and Lucia is on the horizon. A notable example emerges from a video clip where Jason pilfers items from containers, opting to retain some while distributing others. This cooperative element extends to the unlocking of doors and gates, exemplified in a video featuring Jason within the Sand for Sand area, which, if you recall, is the moniker of a gang in GTA 6. In this particular clip, Jason stealthily maneuvers past a red truck, revealing a door from an import garage building bearing the descriptor door panel locked in its debug text. In juxtaposition, a gate within the same clip indicates door unlocked, signifying the necessity of unlocking specific access points. Subsequently, we delve into an extensive catalog of new features, commencing with an upgraded AI system. In a visual excerpt, the enemy AI exhibits an inclination to open fire upon Lucia when she pivots to face them. This hints at AI entities possessing a heightened acumen for discerning opportune moments to engage in combat. Impressively, AI units adapt their elevation relative to surrounding obstacles, steering clear of potentially disadvantageous head-glitching tactics. Furthermore, a prudent alteration manifests as AI adversaries opting to lower their stance during weapon reloads, a judicious move compared to reloading while exposed in the open. Enhanced AI combat tactics are evident in their lateral strafing maneuvers during shootouts. Notably, NPC behavior has undergone substantial refinement. As discernible in the leaked materials, AI characters no longer traverse the game world in solitary isolation, but now frequently assemble into groups. This intriguing development is reminiscent of a feature previously observed in Red Dead Redemption 2, where NPCs often moved in cohesive units. An illustrative instance materializes in a video where Lucia, carrying a duffel bag, shares the sidewalk with three individuals attired as tourists, who engage in animated conversation while strolling past her. This signifies a notable departure from GTA V, where pedestrians predominantly ambulated in solitary fashion, contrasting with the forthcoming inclusion of group dynamics, perhaps even encompassing couples or social cliques, enhancing the very similitude of the game world. A notable addition to the gameplay dynamics is the option to voluntarily surrender to law enforcement during a robbery. The consequences of such an action remain shrouded in uncertainty, warranting further exploration upon the game's release. Furthermore, the mundane act of purchasing gumballs from vending machines emerges as a potentially restorative action. While it can be surmised that gumballs may offer a healing effect, Concrete details regarding their function remain pending confirmation. In a nod to realism, akin to GTA V, the forthcoming installment acknowledges the accumulation of dirt on your character's clothing, reflecting the wear and tear endured during your escapades. The hair and facial hair systems exhibit intriguing variability, with different versions of Jason observable in the leaks sporting varying hairstyles, including long hair, short hair, stubble, and clean-shaven looks. While not definitively confirmed, this strongly alludes to the introduction of a hair growth system akin to the one featured in Red Dead Redemption 2. Given the precedents established in the latter game, the likelihood of such a system in GTA 6 appears high. 
Expanding the repertoire of actions available to players, the ability to consume items directly from your inventory is showcased. When Jason visits a gas station, the inventory reveals options for wine, soda, and fruit consumption, implying that you can partake in these items at your convenience, akin to the mechanics present in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a novel event type named Cop Trap, the game incorporates scenarios where law enforcement sets up traps at multiple locations. While the precise details of these traps remain undisclosed, it is apparent that police will employ diverse tactics to ensnare players. An overhaul in the police system introduces the concept of time until cops dispatch. In this iteration, criminal activities do not instantly summon law enforcement. Instead, players are afforded a brief window to execute an escape before the police response commences. The inclusion of security cameras as a surveillance mechanism adds complexity to evading detection. Unlike the conventional implementation in GTA Online, these cameras employ a detection meter, reminiscent of mechanics seen in games like Payday 2 or Payday 3. Players must act swiftly to evade the camera's line of sight within a specified time frame, akin to a filling bar to avoid detection. This novel approach to security cameras introduces a fresh layer of challenge and strategy to evading law enforcement. Players will have the newfound ability to restrain non-player characters, NPCs. The primary method, as gleaned from the leaks, involves the use of zip ties. This restraint option becomes particularly pertinent during robbery scenarios, where players can employ zip ties to immobilize NPCs. A novel feature that comes to light is the capacity to loot vehicles. A fleeting glimpse in the Hank's Waffles video reveals a button prompt in the bottom right corner of the screen, labeled Examine SUV. This hints at the prospect of inspecting random cars and potentially engaging in vehicular theft. To make car theft more engaging, an advanced hijacking system is on the horizon. The existence of the immobilizer bypass device previously discussed suggests that pilfering high-end vehicles will pose a greater challenge. Additionally, an item known as the Slim Jim will facilitate unlocking older model cars. These mechanics collectively point to the notion that hijacking automobiles will become a more intricate endeavor, with the potential for car theft endeavors to end in failure. Furthermore, two intriguing event types emerge, namely carjacking, cat, and carjacking, advanced AI. These events suggest that the vehicular hijacking process will incorporate nuanced elements, potentially involving the interference of an AI-controlled entity. GTA 6 promises to deliver an augmented vehicular experience through improved vehicle damage and handling. In a displayed video clip, as Lucia attempts to evade pursuing law enforcement, cars suffer more impactful damage. Notably, various parts of the vehicles, such as the front fender and hood, demonstrate more realistic deformation and fragmentation. The in-game interiors now feature functional GPS and waypoint systems on the dashboard, enhancing navigational convenience for players driving in the first-person perspective. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car via the passenger seat, offering flexibility in vehicle interaction. A hallmark of GTA 6 is its meticulous attention to detail. Players can encounter raccoons engaging in behavior, such as rummaging through trash cans and pilfering food bags. These instances are categorized as world events, denoted as raccoon climb out of garbage, raccoon rummage trash, and raccoon steal food bag. While numerous other subtle details enrich the game world, they are too numerous to enumerate here. Interested individuals can explore these intricacies further through the provided link. Expect a heightened level of auditory realism in GTA 6. Weapon sounds exhibit enhanced clarity and realism with greater volume. The sounds of bodies impacting the ground will resonate with a more substantial thud, evoking a heightened sense of impact. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements with heightened realism, while items will produce varying auditory responses contingent on the surrounding context. In essence, sound design in GTA 6 aims to authentically replicate real-life auditory experiences. Fascinating developments. Several months ago, a colossal trove of leaked data unveiled a wealth of intriguing random events, world encounters, that promised to enrich the GTA 6 experience. While I won't delve into all of them, the list is nothing short of captivating. Events range from mundane occurrences like parking disputes to more enthralling incidents such as donut burnouts, protests, and even someone suffering a concussion. The prospect of navigating the lifelike world of Vice City, teeming with such diverse activities, is undeniably exhilarating. I strongly recommend pausing the video to peruse this remarkable compilation. Additionally, we have been privy to an extensive catalog of vehicles slated to appear in GTA 6. These vehicles, gleaned from both in-game leaks and files, I encourage you to peruse this comprehensive list at your leisure. It resides on page 30 of the document. Furthermore, the leaks have divulged a plethora of confirmed locations within Vice City and its environs. Naturally, Vice City itself takes center stage, while several districts and neighborhoods will pepper its landscape. 
Notable locations include Edgewater, North Bay City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Port Gellhorn, intriguingly, appears as a separate city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous iterations. The list extends to encompass Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ekin, Fanaka, Underwater, and Relief. Each of these major locations contains a multitude of sub-locations, a testament to the meticulous world-building evident in the game. As if this weren't enough, the dedicated community has endeavored to construct a speculative map of GTA 6 based on coordinates extracted from the leaks. While the precise layout of the map's northern region remains uncertain, the map preview encapsulates the sprawling Vice City to the south and Port Gellhorn on the left. This visual representation of the game world is undeniably impressive and stokes the anticipation for the immersive adventures that await.